So, um, you know, transferring somebody's pain or karma onto somebody is, you know, goes by the mechanic of chi transfer, which would be cordings or portals. So the same principle applies here, you know, to the scapegoat, you know, or you can call it scape chicken or whatever life form that one wants to burden with your sins, your dark chi. Instead of transferring it into a real stone, you know, you can transfer it into the entity. And, you know, instead of atoning, you know, for your own sins, you know, anything again that separates you from source and lowers your vibration, um, you know, instead of um, learning your lesson and purifying yourself through austerity, this would be the scene style, you know, you would fast or perform maybe good deeds, you know, like charity and give love to the needy, you know, create a positive karma, you know, instead of doing that, self-improvement, <laughs> fixing the problem. No, you just put the burden on somebody else, you know, no lesson learned, you know, just this more suffering for everybody. Welcome to my channel, Tools for Ascension by Wolfgang, and I'm Wolfgang. So in the following guided meditation, we will find out if you are or if your ancestors have been scapegoated by the dark side or sacrificed to the dark side. And are you still suffering from the trauma and how? And then there will be a clearing, you know, the letting go part that is, of course, most important. So soul retrieval is a real big part of my spiritual consultations. And daily I help people whose soul aspects have been trapped, you know, in the astral, and that have been scapegoated, you know, or sacrificed for the benefit of somebody that has no compassion, it seems. And um, they are sacrificed to dark beings, to be clear here. So these soul aspects, you know, are weighted down by darkness, by magic spells, and are constantly getting drained of life force. And so they cannot, you know, ascend into the higher dimensions of consciousness, and so they are stuck here on the lower levels, the lower astral plane, to be more specific. So it's just like a hot air balloon. So um, so the dark beings, you know, use the darkness that is in us, you know, the trauma to keep us down, those bags, you know, and then they drain the life force, the hot air also, so you cannot get into the higher consciousness areas. So only when, you know, you cut down, you know, all the ballast, all the trauma that is there, sometimes also called sin, you know, so sin is considered more self-induced, whereas trauma is more like affected by others. But it just both keeps you down, you know, so this has to be cleared through forgiveness and other methods. And then, um, you know, the hot air is just the life force, high vibrational life force, you know, that will bring the entity into the higher dimensions, and we can do this by chi projection and of course if you can by intent and maybe the grace of higher dimensional beings your intent being the most important part to you mm -hmm. so <laughs> for instance by um, you know by triggering you know your abandonment issues um, through thought forms the dark side um, can play you like an emotional soap opera so to say so just knowing about your trauma, where it is, and the story behind it, um, that doesn't cut it all the way. You know, for examples, uh, you might have a dead rat under your carpet, and you know, uh, you know about that. You know, um, you probably can smell it. You know, but that's not enough. You know, you will also have to do something about it. <laughs> you know, this means. You know, uh, take care of it, or it's going to take a long time, you know, to go away. So it's better you to, to do something about it, you know. And so this is, you know, getting rid of the trauma. So the dead rat, you know, is karma, 
and it may not even be your own, that's the whole idea about scapegoating, and the carpet is your subconscious, you know, it's just out of sight, out of mind, maybe here. So let me just repeat, you know, the dead red is karma, maybe not your own, and the carpet is your subconscious. And many people have dead rats under their carpets. And it takes a long time for that to dissipate. And that is why Bobby's mama always kept a wine cooler in the garage, right? So do not give your power away to me, you know, because Wolfgang said so, uh, because, you know, my guru said so. You know, check things out for yourself. You know, use your own truth meter. You know, use me as a sounding board. So, you know, uh, Bobby, uh, tell me, why are you American uh, syrup bunny? Well, all my friends said that syrup bunny is a great lover. And so, um, as an afterthought, I hope I do not have ex to explain this joke, you know, about giving your power away to others. So let's just go to the definition of scapegoating. And so, you know, there was this tradition um, in Britain somewhere, let's not be too specific, where, um, you know, there was a goat selected and then the whole village put the uh, their um, bad karma onto them through intent and then the goat was pushed over the cliff, you know, so with the expectation that they're going to die. And then, of course, the... Um, village was relieved, um, you know, of their sins. It's an act of, of magic, so to say, of intent and magic. And in German, you know, there's Sündenbock, so, you know, this concept was known there too. And, you know, in, in another way, um, there is this concept of the whipping boy, you know, you have an aristocratic child, this cannot be beaten. But, and, you know, you have a friend, the play friend, that gets beaten you know, every time, you know, the aristocratic child, you know, skewed, screws up. And um, so, <laughs> you know, basically the pain is transferred to somebody else. Um, there is also this, um, you know, story of Dorian Gray, of um, this um, young man, um, who uh, looks very innocent, but who has a painting of himself somewhere in an attic. And so he has a very so-called sinful lifestyle. Let's say uh, sinful, let's define this as low vibration, you know, um, something that lowers your vibration, like lying, cheating, stealing, violence, you know, all kinds of indulgences that drain your life force too much. Um, so anything that lowers your vibration, and but it wouldn't show on his face, it would show on the painting. And so the painting, in a way, was the sin box, something that manifests, you know, the bad deeds that you do. Mm -hmm. Well, in, with the criminals, you know, it's the patsy. <laughs> If you want to do a crime and then, you know, have a closure on this, you know, you need a patsy. So somebody that's innocent and and then, uh, you know, gets fingered for this. I mean, I just heard about the word patsy um, from, uh, you know, the Kennedy assassination. You know, that's where this idea, you know, got brought to my attention. And so basically, you know, um, being a scapegoat means um, getting blamed for something that we did not do. And so we are getting sacrificed, this means um, making sacred for the sins, for the darkness of others. Mm -hmm. uh, this can also take other forms, like emotional dumping through the courts that you may have, you know, with ex-lovers. You know, um, I find this in so many cases that... Mm, you know, when there is a breakup, you know, there is our own pain, and of course, from our energy that's still with the other, and missing this part of ourselves and not feeling complete. But then there's also a lot of sadness that does not necessarily come from the person itself, that comes from the ex-lover. 
you know, they are escorting there and the ex-lover thinks, oh, you know, if this my lover would be still with me, I would not be in this pain and blame, 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 and, you know, send all the sadness, um, you know, um, to her. So whenever she thinks of Bobby, you know, and blames him, you know, this bastard, you know, doing this to her, and, you know, you're suffering so much because of Bobby, so Bobby will feel sad in his heart. And so he gets to carry something that he may, you know, um, not have generated himself. So, uh, in a way, you know, this is um, karma dumping. You know, mm, karma is the reaction of our actions, so to say. You know, the physics of, you know, um, the energy that is being put in has to be put out, maybe in a different form. So, um, in another way to look at it, it is, um, you know, chi dumping. You know, chi is a life force, it has different names. It's also called Ki, Prana, Vril, Borgon, you know, and there are many other, you know, words for it. Um, but it is, um, you know, an energy that's in the astral and that follows the laws of um, quantum physics, not of Newton's physics. So, um, you know, transferring somebody's pain or karma onto somebody is, you know, goes by the mechanic of chi transfer, which would be cordings or portals in other ways. And um, so, for instance, you know, this life force, this chi, you can feel it with your hands, you know, around objects, around the body, and especially in areas of pain. Um, you know, um, you can feel it in your hand, you know, then there will also be pain in your hand. You know, we may have different types of sensation. Um, so most people can feel it somehow, and um, not just only in their hands, but sometimes in your own, you know, body, you know, or it just affects your emotions, so to say. You know, you step into a room and suddenly you feel sad. You know, yeah, you're reading the chi that's in this room. Um, and of course, um, some psychics, you know, they can actually see the chi um, that is there in, 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 in the force field. It's like an overlay um, over them. Let's say uh, once, you know, I saw a crazy person and, you know, they're just across the street. I know this one was crazy. You can see by the walk many times. And uh, there were all kinds of sparks shooting off this person. Same with the junkie that was running out of stuff, you know. I mean, a lot of, you know, very strong, you know, sparks could be seen, you know, very dissonant, you know, um, suffering type, you know, thought forms could be seen around. Um, so that's the arm um, of um, Qi. Now, it's um, to understand this whole um, karma dumping and um, Sündenbock story, let me just tell you a little um, bit about German magic. Uh, you know, of course, it's called a will magic. And so what they do, they're in, uh, you know, it's crude. And I would never do this kind of stuff. Um, let's say, um, you know, you um, uh, want to get a certain result and you, um, let's say, you want to have uh, a certain emotion, like victory, you know, you create a certain victory, euphoria, maybe for a speech. Um, you know, you use a metal or a stone, a substance. I'm not going to get into any details here, so I don't want this to get it used. And um, so and every time, you know, you have this emotion of victory, you know, you just project this, like I project love, you know, they project this emotion of victory into this substance. And, you know, then there is, you know, a lot after some time, a lot of this emotion, of this thought form, of this chi, of this real, you know, in this substance. And then when it is supposed to be released at a certain moment, uh, they toss it into boiling water. And, you know, the whole thing comes up suddenly and you get a very strong effect. Mm -hmm. So here, and then this can be sent to other people and location by intent, and most likely not for a good purpose. <laughs> so the same principle applies here, you know, to the scapegoat. 
you know, or you can call it scape chicken, or whatever life form that one wants to burden with your sins, your dark chi. Instead of transferring it into a real stone, you know, you can transfer it into the entity. And, you know, burning man again, you know, comes to the mind. And of course, so, you know, blood sacrifice. You know, this whole arm of blood sacrifice. Um, to affect some positive result or clearing, you know, through others' suffering. You know, so the Maya. Um, you know, big, big, big thing, you know. And then even, um, you know, in the Jewish tradition, you know, I mean, I think Jesus got quite, you know, upset, you know, about this kind of business, you know, in the temple. It wasn't just about the cash flow, you know, I think it was about the whole mentality of just, you know, having somebody else, you know, um, pay for your sins, so to say, you know, <laughs> bribing yourself out of into high vibration, <laughs> or bribing yourself out of low vibration. And then, of course, I mean, we all know that Jesus is called the sacrificial lamb. You know, I mean, that's scapegoat, right? I mean, you get to see a very different connection when you've called Jesus the scapegoat. And I'm not trying to be offensive here, please. You know, I love Jesus very much. And, uh, so, uh, but, you know, it's just a sad image, you know, to have of your spiritual master, you know. As, uh, in this way. So, um, so in, in many ways, you know, we, um, um, you know, um, may even unintentionally use uh, Jesus as a scapegoat. You know, Bob Marley calls it um, going to heaven in Jesus' name. Right? But I think Jesus was very enraged by this scapegoat mentality. And you know, instead of atoning, you know, for your own sins, you know, anything, again, that separates you from source and lowers your vibration, um, you know, instead of um, learning your lesson and purifying yourself through austerity, this would be the Essene style, you know, you would fast or perform maybe good deeds, you know, like charity and give love to the needy, you know, create a positive karma, you know, instead of doing that, self-improvement, <laughs> fixing the problem. No, you just put the burden on somebody else, you know, no lesson learned, you know, just this more suffering for everybody. And so the big kicker here in scapegoating, you know, it's, um, it's going to be, you know, trauma binding. You know, this is, um, you always bind um, with something um, when there is a strong emotion in, involved. You know, that's when this cording happens. And so, in a good case, you know, and this, uh, there is love bounding or binding, you know, that happens. Let's say, um, you know, that happens to a nursing, you know, or little, little chicks when they come, the goose chicks when they come out of the eggs, first thing, you know, they see it's, um, you know, mommy binding. Oh, well, that's love binding in a way. Mm -hmm. um, so the same thing happens through nursing, you know, with humans or good romantic love making. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then, of course, you know, there is also, you know, the bonding that happens in foxholes, you know. Um, when there is, you know, a very strong emotion again there. And um, and then, of course, you know, um, when Bobby beats us, you know, to an inch of our life, you know, with a wet sock, and that often create, you know, then a trauma bonding. You know, this is, um, they have access to your energy, you're probably never going to get this out of your mind, you know. And this causes, you know, energy cords, you know, to be formed between you and the one you know, that you have this strong emotion with. Mm -hmm. And then chi can be transferred, you know, easily in this direction. So I'm just pointing this out, you know, this is that, you know, yeah, you think that you are, um, you know, you sacrifice somebody, throw somebody under the bus, do you get in your way with this? No, you're going to be bound to this person and keep running into them lifetime after lifetime. You know, that is the, the, the truth here. Mm -hmm. And then they're probably also going to be on the other side of the stick next time. Mm -hmm. So, in uh, 
In other words, you know, um, that another example, your ex lovers most likely still have access to your energies and they're still affecting you. And um, it, there, if, you know, especially if there was some type of intensity involved. So, but in this video, you know, we will focus on the scapegoating aspect, you know. Um, you can find other videos about cord cutting on my channel. You know? Also, of course, this is a shotgun meditation and it will probably not clear all the scapegoat issues for you. But, you know, there will be layers. Um, so, how many times are you supposed to do this? You know, so first of all, you know, uh, do you have any strong emotional or physical sensation, you know, after certain questions in the guided meditation? You know, pay attention to this. So don't just lay there like, ah, you know, I'm so relaxed. No, I mean, you know, be very relaxed and smile, but also, you know, pay attention. Preside in your heart and see, you know, what happens, you know, when certain intent is set, you know, and then you are aware. You know, also, you know, wonder, you know, if there is a sensation of tingling or crying suddenly, you know, after certain things, or sorrow, fear, pains, or wanting to throw up. I mean, this is, um, you know, when you tap into some real darkness, especially in your solar plexus, there is this oh, feeling, it kind of looks to me like olive, olivey, toxic olivey, you know, uh, like from a gallbladder, <laughs> you know, and do you want to throw up, you know, so these are all, you know, yeah, there's a lot of trauma there when this happens. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, of course, there can also be tightness around the neck and throat, you know, I mean, yeah, strangulation hanging and so on. And hot and cold flashes, you know, it's called sweats, and burping, lots of burping I come across. And, um, you know, in some good cases, people really start to smile and do divine movements, even mudras and so on, or take yoga poses. You know, I've seen this too. So these are all signs <laughs> that you still have baggage around those issues, of course, in a positive way that you are clearing. Mm -hmm. So see if you feel lighter and happier after the meditation, you know, and that would be the proof that you had some type of improvement. Mm -hmm. And then try the meditation again, you know, in a month, and observe, you know, what new layers start to emerge, and you still have this intense sensation. You know, if not, you may then switch to another guided meditation uh, that you feel drawn to. And of course, you can always treat yourself to a private session, you know, and cut right to the chase. So I'm still affordable, and then just go to my website, you know, and send me an email, you know, or check out my info and show more below. And pretty, pretty please, you know, with organic dates on top, not the blind dates or Tinder dates. Um, please reward my time and expertise, you know, with giving me a thumbs up, you know, or subscribe, you know, or share my videos, you know, which takes only seconds and would help, you know, get the message out there. So, and of course, no, absolutely no driving during the following guided meditation, please. Now, close your eyes and smile. We will be addressing absolute source now. And we ask that everything that happens in and from this meditation here is going to be for the highest good in divine harmony with the most benevolent outcomes. Amen. Um, make sure you agree with this. Just say Amen, this means you agree. And dear souls, we intend to clear all the baggage and trauma and karma that was put onto us and our ancestors in this and past life incarnations. Amen. Also please liberate any bound or stuck soul fragments and integrate them back into our soul, you know, or for my loved ones into their soul. Um, 
Also, please take our power and energy back that was wrongfully taken from us. Amen. And connect us back into our own inner opulences instead of looking outside of ourselves. Amen. Mm -hmm. And connect us to the aspects of us that are whole and full, full of love and fully integrated with source energy. And in case we and our ancestors scapegoated other living beings, we also asked for forgiveness and their liberation with the same grace and mercy that is also extended to me and my ancestors. Um, mm -hmm. And now, um, now just um, imagine that you draw the love from the Earth Goddess deep into your root, or through the root and into your whole body. And send your love and the exhale down into her. Imagine that your whole spine is like a big tree that's rooting deep into the earth. And pull the earth love, you know, into yourself. Smile, 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 smile. Mm -hmm. And then the exhale, send your love down as deep as you can. Now also add your legs like big, big tap roots too. Pull the love in and send your love down. And now put your tongue to the palate and pull as much love as you can from the earth gods into your heart and on the exhale you know push it out as much and hard as you can from the top out the top so as if you are a whale that's pushing out you know water out there mm -hmm. just blow it out the top of the head right now and now we ask the, our spirit guides and the angels of love and light to pour a lot of love and light and the best protection healing and updates for us and to us from the heavens, Amen. It takes about five seconds. So it should be coming in around now. And start inhaling this mm -hmm. all the way into your body, not just your lungs. All the way to your fingertips. And your toes and heels. Everywhere, everywhere. It's a week. Mm -hmm. And now um, pull in also the love of the Earth Goddess into you. So we have a 50 50 mix. You simultaneously pull the love from the heavens as well as from the earth into your heart. And then the exhale just expand. You know, don't be too picky with the visualization, it's more like a feeling you know, of these streams of love coming into you. But uh, smile and breathe deeply. That's definitely very essential. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so this is kind of the pattern we just will be keeping, you know, for the rest of this meditation to just keep on always pulling in the love from heaven and earth into your heart if this becomes a habit for you. That is great. You know, most yogis don't even have that one together. <laughs> so, uh, let's just um, um, ask, you know, the divinity in your own heart, your own divine guidance, you know, from your own heart. And to give you a yes, and the yes would be an upflow of energy. I'm going to give you an example. So this is how this probably feels. Upflow from heart to the head would feel like this. One more time, a yes would feel like this. That would be a strong yes. And to now would be a flow of energy from the heart to the ground, like a downer, it would feel like this.
one more time. It would feel like this. Okay, so now back to pulling in the nice love from heaven and earth into the heart. Smile like an idiot, breathe like a bellow. Mm -hmm. And so let's ask the first question. And <clears throat> have you ever been scapegoated in this lifetime? Yes or no? And sometimes, you know, even blame was put onto you, you know, for a classroom joke or in the family. You know, and somebody, you know, threw you under the bus. Now it's asked, you know, the biggest scapegoating trauma from this lifetime, what would that be? And you might just have some memories popping up, you know. I mean, you're not buying a house here. So, you know, just take it at face value. Let's move on. Um, did you get scapegoated in a past lifetime? Yes or no? And uh, did you scapegoat others in past lifetimes? Yes or no? Is there still any karma from this? Yes or no? And how does that karma kind of look like? You know, it's probably going to be some memories or some emotions coming over. Hmm? Now I asked, did your ancestors scapegoat others? And most likely they did. You know, so don't be surprised, yes or no. And for the next question, you know, you probably will see it in your families, you know, when there is a lot of suicide or other weird patterns. So let's just ask, is there any karma from this, from scapegoating others, yes or no? And let me just give you an example. So um, there was a pattern, you know, of short-livedness in one client's family line. And so we, we went, you know, to the origin of this. And so fairies had been sacrificed, you know, who lived in a long, long time, you know, to extend the life of a human, like, for 10 years. And so there was payback for that, you know, that was cast onto the whole family. So, of course, we got that straightened out. And so I hope this descending, the next descendant's going to have a normal lifespan. But that's just an example. Let's ask, did your ancestors get scapegoated by others? Yes or no? Now for the next one, um, well, this has happened quite a lot. Did your ancestors escape you, scapegoat you, yes or no? Now the next one is also quite common. Did black magicians scapegoat you, yes or no? And now we're going off the deep end. Did Anunnaki scapegoat you? Yes or no? Did Dracos scapegoat you? Yes or no? Did the Grey scapegoat you? Yes or no? Did 
Did you ever in one lifetime volunteer to get scapegoated? Yes or no? Was this done out of a sense of duty? Yes or no? Was this done out of a sense of guilt? Yes or no? Was this because you had a savior complex? Yes or no? Did you take other people's lessons away by volunteering to skateboard? Yes or no? Did your parents or relatives volunteer you to be scapegoated? Because that causes a lot of betrayal and abandonment issues. So, yeah, did they volunteer you? Yes or no? Did you get scapegoated when you were in an animal body? Yes or no? Did you get scapegoated when you were in a nature spirit body like fae, fairy, mermaid, leprechaun or other life forms? Yes or no? Did you get scapegoated in an Anunnaki incarnation? Yes or no? Did you get scapegoated by Maya or Aztec black sacrifices? Yes or no? Are you affected by Jewish scapegoating magic unto the Goy? Yes or no? Were you scapegoated in Hindu traditions like um, to Kali? No, yes or no? And let me like point out, you know, that when innocent people are sacrificed to Kali, she gets very upset. <laughs> She does not like this whole thing, this whole blood thing, yeah. You know, she is a protector, you know, of the innocent. So, I mean, black sacrifice, you know, is like black magic. And so, um, did we scapegoat out of, you know, a sense of martyrdom, yes or no? Like being a cool monk. Did we martyr out of guilt? Yes or no? And what type of guilt you know, are we atoning for? Was it as a slaver? Was it for military purposes, guilt? Whatever it was, please show us now. Um, and now please pay attention, you know, and make sure you agree with this. You know, this is your life. Mm -hmm. And smile, please. Mm -hmm. In the name of the Absolute Source, you know, I resent, I cancel any and all vows and contracts I have taken, anyone in this body has taken and anyone within my genetic lineage has taken pertaining to being a scapegoat from this incarnation and all incarnations across space and time. Um, um, um. We asked for those, you know, that um, scapegoated us against our free will and transgressed 
you know, spiritual law, please be brought to the highest courts of spiritual justice now and take care so they do not further, you know, negatively affect us. Amen. 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 And he asked for the presence of expert ascension teams that act for the highest good in divine harmony with the most benevolent outcomes. Um, and please bring any stuck spirits or ghost or soul fragments that are still stuck through scapegoat trauma or being sacrificed, you know, to the Arcturian love healing and ascension temples or whatever is most benevolent, you know, according to their tradition. Um, um, um. And please, as a gesture of goodwill, reunite them there with other lost loved ones that are still stuck on the astral planes, like lost baby spirits, sweetheart, grannies, etc. Um. And then please show them the higher as well as the hidden aspects of their incarnation. What was karma? What was volunteered for to learn a lesson? And what sabotage you know, was done by the dark side? And then also clear any misunderstanding. And then clear the deep abandonment pain going all the way back to the perceived separation from source. Amen. And then please help him with forgiveness. And once they forgive and ask for forgiveness, we ask absolute source to please clear any entanglements that still binds them, you know, like vows, contracts, promises, curses candle magic, black magic, forms of binding bombs, booby traps, claws, hooks, cords, chains, you know, spines, you know, and everything else that was not mentioned but needs to leave our space at this time. And then we ask the ancestors that made it into the real heavens, into the higher dimensions, to escort them. And smile, 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 and send a lot of love, you know, in front of you, sending it to the beings. Imagine they are like, um, you know, again, hot air balloons, you know, that are dropping the weight of curses, you know, through forgiveness, asking to for, for forgiveness, and so on. And you send them extra love helping them, you know, to raise their vibrations. So pump love, smile like an idiot, and pull in the love from heaven and earth and send it to them. Mm -hmm. And of course, we ask the angelic beings of love and light to assist. Um, um, um. Let's continue while this is happening. In, you know, we command in the name of the absolute source to clear any karmas, entanglements, cages, pain, cords, spells, contracts, glamours, bindings, promises, debts, um, um, um. and also please clear any artificial manipulation and predatory magic, technology, energy and entities that are transferring dark energy to us, you know, for their own advantage. Also, with your grace and mercy, dear source, clear anything else that has not been mentioned, but should be removed at this time. Um, let's lay another layer of prayer <laughs> until this, you know, let's make this stick. Mm -hmm. So, dear source of all in Archangel Michael, I am a sovereign, divine, eternal being, a fractal of source that is residing in a human body at this time. So, please transmute any physical, astral, emotional, mental and spiritual trauma that is still with me from being a scapegoat 
please transmit them to healing energy and upgrade us to our most divine blueprint as much as possible now. Uh, Now let's do a quick um, soul fragment integration. Right. This is called soul retrieval. I am a sovereign divine eternal being that is residing in the human body at this time. I command in the name of the absolute source to liberate and return any stolen or captured parts of my soul, my energy and my mind for the highest good in divine harmony with the most benevolent outcomes now. Amen. And now we ask our spirit guides you know, to surround each of us and our twin flames with this powerful energy of love and light that can only be penetrated by love and light and then please maintain this 24-7. And um, I will count to three, and then you will be fully grounded back in vacant day consciousness, unless you intended to keep on sleeping. One, two, three. Hello, my friends, so welcome back. You all, please drink a lot of water. And um, <laughs> keep on smiling. Um, and um, you know this should be quite big for many of you so um, drink a lot of water there's going to be a lot of detoxing and if you get a headache you have to drink more water mm -hmm. so uh, you know um, you smile to it and stir in the perma, perma grin you know that keeps you tuned into your higher mind and um if you uh, enjoyed this meditation and you're here for the first time, you know, make sure you subscribe. You know, I have a lot of different meditations for different purposes. You know, ultimately, you most likely, you know, need to do them all or should do them all. You know, it's uh, all different aspects of us being stuck here. And um, it's just good to do it. Um, also, of course, um, you know, try to take a personal session with me, treat yourself, you know, for the special occasion. You will be amazed, you know, on the changes that will happen to you. I have been doing this, you know, for some time, you know, quite successful. So, you know, people are definitely, you know, very surprised. You know, if, if this meditation affected you strongly, imagine I focus my attention on you person. What can be done? Anyhow, um, have a wonderful day. I love you a long time. Namaste.